the government will strip you of your last civil right in order to conceal their own incompetence. Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and this is Winnie the Westie back in my home office. And while you are hearing governments of the world talk about vaccine passports to further limit the rights of citizens, one thing you will not hear them talk so much about are the number of people that died in long-term healthcare facilities from neglect and dehydration. From the Globe and Mail Canada, patients died from neglect, not COVID-19 in Ontario LTC homes, military report finds. Quote, all they needed was water and a wipe down, end quote. LT C, for those of you who may not know, means long-term care facilities, and this is the type of story that is going to make people very angry, and rightly so. I often say that anger is a consuming force, but sometimes anger, when directed properly, can be a very good force for change. This story doesn't just make me angry, this story enrages me. This story enrages me because it's not a one-off story by any means. This is a very, very big problem that has pretty much gone unreported, at least in mainstream media in Canada, and one can only hypothesize on the reason and why. This story enrages me as well because my grandmother-in-law, my wife's grandmother, was in a long-term care facility during the pandemic. She subsequently died not from COVID, not from neglect or dehydration. I think she just died from loneliness, from the lack of connection with other humans after months and months of isolation. But we have our provincial and federal governments just looking at ways to usurp our fundamental rights and liberties, and the only reason they're doing it is to distract from their own negligence and incompetence in the management of this crisis from the beginning. Dozens of residents in two Ontario nursing homes hit hard by the coronavirus died not from COVID-19, but from dehydration and neglect, the Canadian military says in reports obtained by the Globe and Mail. The documents contain new details about the deplorable conditions in two Toronto homes before the forces stepped in last year, revealing for the first time that causes other than COVID-19 hastened the deaths of residents as outbreaks spiraled out of control and staffing collapsed. Staffing collapsed. These were not new issues, new weaknesses within the healthcare system. We knew about these problems for a long time, but not only did staffing collapse, these long-term healthcare facilities were lacking PPE because someone in our government decided that it was a good idea to donate our PPE to China in February. So while the government locks down everybody for two weeks to flatten the curve, while they lock people in their homes, shut down their businesses, there are staffing shortages at these long-term care facilities to the point where infected workers are being forced to work from one facility to the next, thereby increasing transmission from one facility to the next. And the government invokes the COVID deaths in order to justify their usurpation of our civil rights and liberties while simultaneously ignoring the actual problem, while simultaneously allowing old people to die, not from COVID, but from starvation and malnourishment and dehydration. At Downsview, long-term care center where one in four residents succumbed to the virus, another 26 died from dehydration before a military team arrived last June to provide humanitarian and medical support. At Hawthorne Place Care Center, 51 residents died of COVID-19 in the 269-bed facility. The military says it suspects those fatalities pale in comparison to deaths from other causes. Quote, residents are dying from non-COVID-19 causes more than they should be, end quote. Our government pretty much has one job, and that is to protect the most vulnerable in society. And while our governments were shutting people in their homes, shutting down businesses, forcing people to cordon off sections of their businesses so they couldn't sell socks or non-essential items. They were quite literally leaving elderly people to die in horrible, horrible conditions in these facilities. Oh yeah, all the while they were taking their vacations, receiving their paychecks, all the while reducing the better part of society to a government stipend. The allegation of deaths because of dehydration is, quote, not only troubling, but potentially criminal, end quote. Amber Irwin, a spokeswoman for long-term care minister, Marilee Fullerton, said in an email on Sunday. According to figures published by the provincial government, 3,762 long-term care residents in Ontario have died of COVID-19, but no one is tracking the number of fatalities from other causes during the pandemic. This is how the government works. They count certain deaths, but not others in their response. I guess all deaths are equal, but some deaths are more equal than others. And heck, what is the incentive for the government to count the non-COVID related deaths in long-term care facilities? Because that would only reveal their utter incompetence in managing these facilities in the first place. The three-member commission, led by retired associate Chief Justice Frank Frank Morocco criticized the Ontario government's response to the pandemic, saying in its report released on April 30 that it was, quote, slow, uncoordinated, and lacking in urgency, end quote. The government did not ask the military for help in seven homes until the coronavirus was already tearing through the facilities, leaving them without enough staff to stabilize the, quote, increasingly dire situation, end quote, the commission says in its report. I mean, it's impossible to read this and not get enraged at the government incompetence, and I'm calling it government incompetence at best to give them the benefit of the doubt that they do not deserve. While all of this is going 
going down, you have the government quite literally crippling the very infrastructure that is required to care for these people, micromanaging the private lives of regular citizens while leaving people to die literally because all they needed was water and a wipe down. In its report on the Downsview long-term care home, the military expresses, quote, large concern, end quote, with the timing of its arrival. Quote, it was noted by the ACCT, the Augmented Civilian Care Team, that 26 residents died due to dehydration prior to the arrival of the CAF team due to lack of staff to care for them. They died when all they needed was water and a wipe down, end quote. In a report released last May, the military chronicled horrific conditions in the initial five homes it assisted, ranging from poor infection control practices to the neglect and abuse of residents. Opposition leader Andrea Horvath wrote to the Ontario Provincial Police last week, asking it to review whether the commission's findings, quote, constitute a case for criminal charges, end quote. And these stories of deaths of the elderly in long-term care facilities, not from COVID itself, but from neglect, it's by no means unique to Ontario, it's by no means unique to Canada, it is prevalent everywhere, but the government is not really going out of its way to talk about it because it doesn't really make the government response look very good. From the Associated Press, not just COVID, nursing home neglect deaths surge in shadows. A nursing home expert who analyzed data from the country's 15,000 facilities for the Associated Press estimates that for every two COVID-19 victims in long-term care, there is another who died prematurely of other causes. Those, quote, excess deaths, end quote, beyond the normal rate of fatalities in nursing homes could total more than 40,000 since March. And these were the numbers in November 2020. The numbers are only going to be higher now. And when I say that these were known problems at the time and beforehand, that these facilities were quite literally living on the edge, just wait until you read this excerpt from the Associated Press article. These extra deaths are roughly 15% more than you'd expect at nursing homes already facing tens of thousands of deaths each month in a normal year. Quote, the healthcare system operates kind of on the edge, just on the margin, so that if there's a crisis we can't cope, end quote, said Stephen Kay, a professor at the Institute on Health and Aging at the University of California, San Francisco, who conducted the analysis. Quote, there are not enough people to look after the nursing home residents, end quote. Just let this sink in for a moment. Not only were these problems well known in the industry, the weaknesses of the facilities known well in advance, what do our respective governments do? Well, Justin Trudeau donates our PPE to China in February 2020, basically leaving long-term care facilities without the required equipment in order to protect from this. If you are Governor Cuomo out of New York, Governor Whitmer out of Michigan, or Governor Wolf out of Pennsylvania, you are actually requiring these long-term care facilities to accept COVID-positive patients back from the hospital. And if you really want to up it a notch, if you're Governor Cuomo, you just gave immunity to these long-term care facilities for their own conduct. This article is more than one year old. Cuomo gave immunity to nursing home executives after big campaign donations. Critics say data proves New York's liability shield is linked to higher nursing home death rates during the pandemic. And when one incompetent and or corrupt politician sees what another incompetent and or corrupt politician is doing, what do they do? Well, they follow suit. Potential immunity measure against COVID-19 lawsuits could hold up accountability, daughter of late resident. Quote, the trust between the families who have lost loved ones and the government has been broken, end quote. Kathy Parks. Last week, CBC News reported that the Ontario government is considering some degree of immunity from COVID-19 related lawsuits against organizations organizations and people who acted in, quote, good faith, end quote, during the pandemic. Ontario Premier Doug Ford confirmed his government is considering the move, adding that he is, quote, not supporting bad actors, end quote, and will seek accountability from the long-term care sector. The province ordered an independent commission into COVID-19 deaths at long-term care facilities in May. Now, this article is from June 2020, so it is somewhat old, and maybe the government did not follow through with their stated intention, but no, lo and behold, they did. Ford defends bill that critics say shields long-term care homes from lawsuits, published October 21, 2020, updated October 21, 2020. On Tuesday, the Ford government introduced legislation that the province said, if passed, will provide liability protection to workers and businesses in a number of sectors who make, quote, an honest effort, end quote, to follow public health guidelines and laws. Quote, the Ford government tabled a bill obviously designed to shield itself and for-profit long-term care corporations from accountability. More than 1,900 people have died in long-term care during this pandemic, shattering thousands of lives, end quote, Ontario NDP leader Andrea Horvath said in a statement released Tuesday. There really is no other way to put it. The system is broken, there is no accountability, and what does the government do when there are devastating consequences from their own negligence or inaction? They pass the buck onto the citizens and just take away more rights from the citizens. What are they doing to strengthen the health care system? Well, if you're Doug Ford, you're locking people in their homes and giving tickets to kids in parks. If you're Francois Legault in Quebec, you're spending $13 million a month on COVID ads while simultaneously asking the healthcare system to cut $150 million from their budgets. You're talking about imposing vaccine passports so the governments of the world can give certain privileges to their citizens. Privileges, which were rights taken away from the citizens in the first place. And what would these measures do to protect the most vulnerable, those who succumb to the virus and to the neglect in the largest numbers? Absolutely nothing, but it certainly gives the government something. 
something to do. It gives the government something to do while simultaneously distracting from their own negligence, incompetence, or worse. And with that said, uh, sorry for the tone of this vlog. It is very frustrating, it is very unnerving, and hopefully, someday, the government will be held accountable for their neglect. And with that said, because nobody can really remain frustrated while petting a puppy, there is science to back this up, and the old expression, happiness is a warm puppy. If you like my videos and you like my vlog, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and drop a comment in the comment section below because it feeds the algorithm. If you want to support the channel, the support links are really pinned comment. Robert Barnes and I do weekly live streams every Sunday. We do weekly streams with a guest every Wednesday called The Sidebar. You can find us and support us on Locals if you want. It is at vivabarneslaw.locals.com. But more important than any of that, take care of yourselves, check in on friends and family, make sure everyone around you is doing well, and now you know you vlog. Peace out.